Hey, welcome back to Rosalind Problems. Today we're going to take a look at two problems. They are very connected. It's a Fibonacci sequence based problems. One of them is just to write a basic Fibonacci calculation. And the second one is calculate the population of rabbits given month and offspring number. So the base for the rabbits problem is actually the Fibonacci sequence. And we're going to see that. Let's navigate to algorithmic heights and solve the first problem from that section here. So Fibonacci numbers. To be honest, the explanation here is not very kind of beginner friendly. And I'm going to leave two links that in my opinion explain this much better. So the one is this nice and friendly website about Fibonacci sequence. It not only explains the things and gives you examples of the sequences here. The second one is this person has a brilliant explanation of how Fibonacci sequence works and why it is a dynamic programming. This person in this video also goes into three different solutions and he measures the speed of execution of those solutions. I have created a structure already for us. So we are solving our first problem from algorithmic heights and then the rabbits problem. Let's open these files. And the first one is Fibonacci numbers. So here is what I call a Fibonacci loop. It does not use a recursion, but uses just a for loop. And it uses a temporary value. If we are going to try running this, let's try running our code. And we're looking for a 10th Fibonacci number. It is 55. How can we check if it's correct? I use DuckDuckGo search engine. Let's ask it, what is the 10th Fibonacci number? So value number 10 is 55. Our algorithm seems to work correctly. Okay, so our code seems to work just fine. Now we can try making it into a Pythonic code. This is easily translatable to any language. And in my opinion, it is very easy to follow what is happening here. So let's try copying this function. I'm going to select it, control alt down, and it will copy it. And then just holding alt, I'm going to press down to move that one line and I'm going to save it. So now let's try making this code more Pythonic. We are going to rename the function into Pythonic. Now that we have the name Pythonic added, let's make it Pythonic. So we can make this a one line, old, new, equals one, one. Okay. And in the for loop, we can get rid of this temporary value that takes up space and memory. And we can change these lines to this. And of course, TMP val is not there anymore because we just need to use new. Okay, so let's try running our function, control L down to copy this and use our Pythonic function. Let's see if they return the same result. And of course they do. We can try some other random numbers. Let's say 12. Yes, they do. I will also add a description of how this actually works but I encourage you to use debugger and run this function line by line in the loop to see what is actually happening to these values. So this is kind of a self study part here. Now that we have this for loop working, we can go back to Rosalind request a data set data set is going to return a number, which we can put into our function, let's say it returns 13, we run it, and we use that number to solve the problem on Rosalind. I'm going to leave that part to you. Okay. So now let's look at rabbits problem. We're going to go back to our list. We're going to switch to stronghold again, and we're going to go to rabbits and recursion problem. This might get a little bit tricky. If you're not used to looking at the rules and thinking how you can come up with an algorithm to solve the problem, given the rules, this definitely will be a little bit tricky. And again, the explanation is here, but it's not very in-depth explanation. I'm going to link two amazing articles where people solve this problem. So one of them is right here. I use this as well for my first kind of naive solution. This person right here has an amazing step-by-step -step explanation. And he actually has some graphs here and the code. 
and some pictures here to explain how populations work. So I would suggest going back to Rosalind, trying to read this problem, then read this article here, and then I will link this article as well. So as many sources of information you can get if you're kind of stuck or not sure is good. So the more you have, the better. So after reading a problem from Rosalind and going through these two articles I'm going to link, you should get a very good idea of how to solve this problem. This solution right here uses recursion. You will see that recursion is not a very fast solution, especially when the lot of data is applied to this algorithm. We're going to use our fast for loop to solve this problem. I will also link to these two articles here. They describe why function calls are not free, especially in the language like Python, where it's not a compiled language. Why is a function call performance important? Because recursion is function calling itself many, many times. This is called dynamic programming. So a function calls itself with modified parameters then calls itself again, and this looks like a Russian nesting doll. So understanding the performance cost of a function call is important. So let's switch to our rabbits problem, and let's copy this Fibonacci loop Pythonic solution. So here is our base Fibonacci loop Pythonic function. We need to modify it to actually solve rabbits problem. First thing we're going to do, we're going to use months as a variable and offspring count. Now let's rename all of the variable names to parent and a child so it's easier to understand and follow the code. So let's do this, do a bulk rename, old, to parent, rename all, and a new will be a child. Okay, so we are almost done. We are just missing one thing. We know that we can run through five months, but we have an amount of offspring generated every single month. So it's not one child every single month. So we need to multiply children by the number of offsprings. Okay. And the last small modification is we have to run through amount of month instead of numbers. So we're passing a month. We're going to run through five months, for example, and the number of offsprings will be, let's say, three. So every single cycle, we're going to generate children multiplied by the number of offsprings we want. Let's try running this code with a sample data set and then try to visualize what is actually happening. Let's switch to Rosalind quickly and get a sample data set. So we are asked to run for five months, five generations, and every generation should produce three offsprings. And in the end, we should have 19 pairs. So five months and three offsprings. Let's see what we have. And the result seems to be correct. It's 19 pairs. So let's now try visualizing this algorithm. I'm going to start a set of comments right here. And as we know, as per Rosalind problem, we have children and we're going to notate them as small o. They can reproduce, but only in one cycle. So they start as children, they become parents, and only then they can reproduce. And number zero is going to be parents. They can reproduce and move on to a next cycle and reproduce again and on and on. So let's try a scenario that is a bit smaller because it will be way easier to calculate. Let's say five months and two offsprings. Let's try running it now. We can see the number is 11. So let's try looking at every single month step by step. So now we have our five month. We're just going to take a look at why do we get 11 in here. So we know that the first pair are children and they start like that. So O is children. That's where they are. In next cycle, in next month, they mature, but they don't reproduce yet because they just matured. In month number three, we still have that parent because we know that it moves on to a next cycle and it also reproduces. So we're going to move it to this cycle first. And our rules say offspring number is always two. 
So offsprings are going to be one, two. Now, next iteration, month number four, we still have this parent. It's moving to a next cycle. Here it is. And it reproduces again as per rules. It will reproduce and add two more pairs, children pairs. So one, two. Now we had these two children and they become parents in this cycle. In months number five, we apply the same rules. We have a parent that moves on to a next cycle. We're going to have it here. We know it reproduces. It produces two pairs, two children pairs. So we're going to do this, two. We had these two children. They become parents, one, two. And we already had two more parents here. And in this cycle, they stay, but they reproduce twice. And the other parent here does the same. It moves on to the cycle and it reproduces twice. So now we have this. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven pairs. Let's try running this code again. And we know it is eleven. Let's try adding month number six before we run the code and see the result. So. Okay, applying the same rules. A parent moves on to this cycle and reproduces twice again because we have a number of offspring set to two. So it gives two offsprings. Then we had two children here and they become parents. Then we had three parents in a row. So parent one moves on and reproduces. Parent two moves on and reproduces. And parent three moves on and reproduces. Next, we had two children. They become parents. Then we had a parent that moves on and reproduces. And the last two are just two children and they become parents. So let's see. We know that this number is 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Let's change that to sixth month and run it. And it is 21. All right, so I really hope that this step-by-step -step explanation helps to understand how this algorithm works and why it produces the results it produces. Let's try running two algorithms in parallel. I'm going to copy and paste this solution from the web page I showed you before. So let's comment this out. And let's run our functions side by side on the same data. So let's try running print. Fibonacci Pythonic and let's run it on a large values like that for example 35 month five offsprings and you're going to see how large of a number it generates it's a huge number but we can see that it only takes 0 0.085 seconds to run and calculate this value with our for loop okay let's try running it a couple of more times of course it's going to depend on the speed of your computer but it should not be even a second to calculate that. To compare the speed, let's copy this. And instead of our Pythonic function here, we're going to run this generic recursion solution. Okay, let me comment this out and let's run it. Okay, so I'm running it now and it already takes so much longer to run it. You can see there's no output for three seconds, three and a half seconds. Let's try running it again. Maybe there was something wrong with the computer. No. So this brings us back to the question, why do I need to go above the basics of my programming language, Python in this case? Imagine you're writing five, six, ten different functions and you are writing them in a generic solution like that. It does the job, but if you're running ten functions in a pipeline, each is going to take three, five seconds, but you're running them thousands and thousands of times, this will accumulate in days of running time of your code. So figuring out a solution like that, that is kind of a generic solution that is found on your first search online, but then going back and looking at some extra solutions and comparing the speed is a good idea. Now you are ready to go back to Rosalind. Request a data set, which is two numbers, a month and an offspring count. Pass it to one of these functions. Hopefully you're going to pass it to a fast function and solve the problem on Rosalind. If you still have any questions about this Rosalind problem, 
make sure to join our Telegram or Matrix chat so we can discuss this solution or any questions you might have. This is it for this video. Until next time, Rebel Coder, signing out.